Well, it catches you off guard when somebody says your name and you don't think you have anything. <laughs> but I know the Lord has something that, uh, that He wants ministered this morning. And so I'm just going to obey the Lord and whatever He gives me, I'll say, and whatever He's done, I'll sit down. <laughs> um, but I'm hearing a lot about fire this morning, and I know personally for me, I feel like that's where I'm at uh, some is, is, you know, not a scary place of hell and torment and all that, but a place of, uh, of revealing Him in my life. Because I feel that sometimes and it's uncomfortable and you feel all the, uh, the heat of it, you feel all the, uh, the emotion of it, all the, the, I mean, there is a part of uh, uh, an un, uh, uncomfortable feeling to our natural man, if you will, the torment part that it talks about. The, the suffering part, the, 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 all that peace. That's what our natural man's going through in that time. It's not what our spirit's going through, yeah. but it's what the natural man's being exposed to because it goes against everything that he knows to be in the fire of God. Yes. And that's what I was just hearing uh, Bob saying. I think it's so true is, is where we're going is something completely different. It's something that's formed by the fire, that's molded through a process by the very hand of God himself, the very thing that he had in mind when he said, let us make man in my image. Or in our image. And so that's where we're heading, is that, that, that image. Yes. But there's a process in it. There's a dealings. Uh, we ministered on the dealings of God a few services ago. And it's so important because this people sees that and doesn't run from it. Amen. Or doesn't uh, place blame on a, on a devil or, or, or on somebody else. They, they, they realize that it's God dealing with the people. It's allowing them to go through things to be changed. To be like him, to, to, to begin to gain the mindset that he has, the, the, the compassion that he has, the love that he has, the, the, the non-human characteristics is the best way that keeps coming to mind for me, is the things that he is that is not human. Because the church world, they still worship God out of a human perspective. It's, it's an external thing, it's an emotional thing, it's a, uh, 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 you know, it's, it's just such a human characteristic worship. It's, it's if... Uh, <laughs> I remember Mike telling that story all the time with that lady that gets up and dances. If, if she gets up and dances, everybody's excited and it's a good service. <laughs> but we don't base our services off if somebody comes in here and dances or yells or sings. And, you know, often we're doing stuff like that, but that's not what we're basing our services off of. It's by the Spirit moving. By the things that we can't see or, or, or touch or, uh, uh, or feel in the natural senses. Now, we experience that in the spiritual senses. And, and, and I know that we come into service and we have our uh, intimate moments too, but I believe there's becoming a time where we're beginning to experience that more and more each and every day. Yes. Yes. To where as we go into work or we go into our home or whatever, when we see the spiritual reality of what's going on. Yes. And that's only through the fire because there's a layer, there's that veil of our flesh that's still there. Yes. And even though it's began to go away, it's still there to a certain extent. Or else we wouldn't be like we are. And that's not to condemn, that's just a reality that we still have some flesh that needs to be dealt with. Amen. But it's being dealt with. Amen. And praise the Lord for that. Yes. That's a glorious thing because, because, as I said, we're a people that's willing to submit to the fire. Yes. And that's what it takes to, to, to get to where we're going. is to allow the Lord to burn up all these things that's within us. All these things that was placed there long ago, maybe even before we were in this earth realm, in our family's generations, and man himself, all these characteristics, all these, uh, all these things that are part of who man is have to be burned up. Yeah. Yeah. That's what the new creation is. It doesn't say uh, 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 just a different creation. It's a new creation. Yeah. It's not the old man dressed up looking different. It's completely something different. Right. And man doesn't have control over what it looks like. Yeah. <laughs> Man keeps getting bits and pieces of the revelation and trying to make a picture. Yep. But man doesn't even know what it looks like yet. He knows some characteristics of it because we, because we saw the sun. We saw Jesus come that was the fullness. So we know what it looks like. But we don't know how to get there. We don't know how to, uh, uh, to become that without the, the dealings and the fire of God. Yeah. That's all we know right now. That's all I know at least is that I'm in this process being molded into what I'm supposed to be. And there's all these things coming up in my life that's for a purpose. And they come in seasons and in times. And they, they come, and it seems as even uh, in, in groups of the body at times, there's the same thing that a lot of them are dealing with at the same exact time. And again, I think it's God working something out of a people. Not just for those individuals, but for the body. For an entire whole that there's been individual dealings going on. There's, there's, uh, there, there's times, and I haven't experienced this uh, 
you know, to my knowledge, who all knows what the Spirit's doing that we don't know about, but of times that I've heard of ministry having a unified, uh, I don't even know what you call it, experiences in the Spirit is, I guess, the best way to put it, where they've, where they've almost, you know, they've had, to their knowledge, similar events in the Spirit. But I believe that's what we're beginning to have more and more of is an awareness of what's going on in the Spirit. And so we're beginning to bind together in Spirit to begin to put death underfoot. Because it's going to take walking in the Spirit to be able to go through this thing. Because as I said, it's uncomfortable to the flesh. So if we stay in the earth realm trying to go through this thing, it's going to get the best of us. It's going to want to make us run from God. And that's what I say, the church world, uh, they live out of that human characteristic. And so they're actually <laughs> running from God most of the time. They don't see it as that. They go to the altar and pray, but most of the time they're really running from God. Because it's not a fun process. It's not something we want to go through uh, in, in, in the natural. But it's something that a mature company, this 144,000, all these things, all the, uh, uh, the metaphors and all the things you see in the Bible that talks about it, it's a people that's tried and true. It's a people that's been through the fire, that's pure gold, that has a pure heart. No more uh, guile in their mouth, as that was saying. No more of all that stuff. No more of the hatred, the, the, the lust, the envy. All these human things are gone and done away with. Not just that they wake up and say, oh, Lord, today, don't let me think a bad thought. It becomes not a part of who they are anymore. And, and that's mind-blowing, thinking of it from a human perspective. Because as much as I've changed, I still have those days, and it's like to think of where there's no more of that, where that's just gone. All the fear is gone. All the hate. All the pain. All the torment. All those things are gone in the earth realm. And so when they begin to disappear in us, they begin to disappear in the body. Because what we're doing is for a people in God in this hour. We're walking into a place in God where man's not been before. Only Jesus knows where we're going. He's the only one. And there's nobody beyond Jesus. <laughs> as much as they like to think they are, there's nobody beyond Jesus. Because there's no way to get there because we're created through him. So how do we get beyond him? You can get theological, you can get doctrinal, you can get all these things, but the reality is, is Jesus is here to stay. <laughs> no matter if we become like him or not, we're not going beyond him. We're still, I believe that even as we begin to become in his image and have an equality, we're still going to bow and worship him. I don't believe just because we're going to become like him, now he's going to be our brother that's just equal. I mean, he is in a sense because, because there's a love that's shared that, that gives an equality. But in the sense of who we are, he still has a superiority. We're all sons of God and he's our elder brother, but there's a difference. Because he's the heir that we get all things through. He's who the Father gave everything to. So without him, we have nothing. I mean, that's just like taking over a family business and acting like you're the one that started it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's what comes to mind in my spirit as I think of that is it's like people in this day for what all people set up for them, all the ministry set up, what Jesus has done and all these people is coming in and saying that they started it all. Yeah. Saying we are God. <laughs> but it's such a deception, such a lie that comes to people today. Uh, not even just in a spiritual sense, in a natural. And I believe that's what's being peeled away from a people because even in the kingdom truth there's still... Uh, fallacies, if you will. There's still things because it's not yet been revealed. It's not that, you know, that, that, that we have bad intent or uh, ill will or any of that. It's just things have not yet been revealed as they are. So we don't have the full comprehension yet. And so to stay humble before the Lord, to stay open, to stay honest with ourselves is an important thing in this day. And that's what that fire is for, is to keep us in check. As soon as we begin to get to uh, pride for, too, uh, even relaxed or lazy. That's what that fire is for. It's to keep us moving. Because if we're sitting down, he puts that fire under us to get us up and moving. If we're there too long, he puts that fire there. If we're getting too far ahead, <laughs> he shows us and says, you don't really know what you think you know. <laughs> And so I think that, that, that as we look through, uh, through all the dealings, throughout history, through the uh, uh, nation of Israel, through, through, uh, through the present day church, to all this, it, it's constantly where God's having to, uh, to bring a pe people back in, in, into his will. And that's what we see atonement for, and that's what we see uh, 
a repentance for and all that. But I believe there's coming a day where that's not going to be needed. Because Jesus is forming a people that's going to begin to be steady as he is. It's going to begin to be uh, uh, Christ-like. Because Jesus isn't having to go and repent. <laughs> He, he's, uh, he is what he is. He's, 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 uh, uh, I mean, there's not even really words for what he is because it's so much different than what we know. He, he's not faltering. He's not one day, uh, he loves us one day, he's not. And so he's having to go repent because now he's mad at us. Jesus is always in right standing with God because he is the fullness. He can't falter from that. He can't, uh, no matter what we do, he can't, we can't change his emotions, his will, his mindset. And that's where the people of God have to get to is a place to where all these things of the earth realm don't change who they are in God. To where they begin to see family members going through something and instead of fear, they begin to praise the Lord because they know something's being done. And we know all this is being done for a reason. And so I praise the Lord every time. Uh, I don't, maybe at first, because as soon as you hear that there's a new trial, <laughs> you get a little... A little aggravated or whatever, but then as time goes on, I begin to see the deal, uh, the purpose of it. Yeah. I praise the Lord for it, yeah. for all those things that we go through, as bad as they seem. Yeah. Um, I mean, I can only imagine uh, uh, Mike going through all that and seeing the purpose of it. And he, you know, in 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 the internal dealings as we go through these things, there's not always things that we can talk about through them. Right. There's things that go on that are so much deeper than what we could ever express. Right. But in due time, I believe those things are going to begin to come out of us. Yeah. Maybe even where they do make sense in the earth realm. But even if they don't, that doesn't matter because in the spirit, they're ministering something to a people. Oh, yeah. Yeah. As we go through something, it begins to give back something. Oh, yes. Out of a new life, yeah. a new walk, a new day, yeah. all these things. Yeah. Yeah. We begin to live out of a place where Christ is right now. Yeah. 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 Because until we get to that place, creation's not going to change. That's the only way to see things change is to get to where Christ is at. And he's at the right hand of the Father. He's in the throne room. He's in all these things. He has power. He has glory. And so, and, and so praise the Lord for all the miracles. Praise the Lord for all these things. But as Bob was saying, we've got to go beyond that. Not to discredit or discount it because all that's part of who the Lord is. But he's so much more than that. Because a healing, the only way a healing could take place is if death was already there. And see, that's why I say in Christ, all that's gone. He's healed. He's, he's full. He's, uh, uh, well, I don't even know if you say healed because he was never broken, but, but, he, but he's constant. There's no constantly uh, going through trials and healing and all that with the Lord. He, he's, he's there. And that's what he's bringing a people into. Is, is a people that, that, that no longer uh, uh, get off that path. Because they know no other path anymore. The, all those other paths have been taken away. That's right, we'd have nowhere else to go. And what a day. What a day we're walking into, because that's what we're walking into. As a people, we're walking into a place where all the other paths, uh, one thing is God's taken them away. Yes. It wasn't even by choice. I know we have a free will, but that's only to a certain extent sometimes. Because God has a plan, and our free will is not going to change that. <laughs> So he lets us go outside and play around as much as we want. Then when we come back inside, he puts us right back in line. <laughs> he makes sure we're still on the path that he chose for us. But I believe that as we begin to go out and play, we're going to begin to know the will of the Lord more and more. And not have to come back in and repent and do all these things. Because we're going to begin to walk in the fullness. And whenever you're doing that, there is no uh, asking for, for correction or for judgment for any of that. It's serving a purpose in this uh, time and place right now, but it won't always have a judgment time. There's a time past judgment. And we're not beyond that yet. I know people say that. <laughs> we're not there. We're in the middle of it. And thank God for that. Because it begins to reveal who He really is in a way that goes beyond words, that goes beyond ideas. There's a life, there's a substance to it that goes beyond just talking about what Jesus is. It's, it's, you begin to uh, understand him in a way that you wouldn't if you hadn't gone through it. Amen. Even if you understand the concept, there's a difference. We talk about being crucified through Christ all the time, but there's a difference of talking about it and going through it. Amen. And so far, I've only experienced so much of it. I know people have experienced that to a way deeper level than I have. And that's why I say I could sit up here and talk about it, but until 
Each and every one of us go through that. We don't have that experience. But that's where he's taking us is through that process. Because that's the only way to experience that resurrection life is to be crucified. To, to die of our own wills, to die of our own emotions, to die of our own experiences, our ideas, our, our thoughts, our, uh, all that. And begin to live out of His will. A different life source that, that, that as I said, only knows, uh, only knows life. True life. Resurrection life. That life-given spirit that, that, that changes things. That as death comes into His presence, it begins to be changed instantly. And we see that at times. We see the miracles. We see the, 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 the instant healings. But I believe we're going to begin to see more and more of that. And not that we're going to get caught up into that and begin to worship the miracles and begin to worship that. Because we know there's something more. But that's, going, that's the reality is the more that Christ is revealed, the more that takes place. And so I praise the Lord because... Because as a time like we're getting ready for the conference in July, I believe that's what stuff like that's going to begin to be for. is a place for people to begin to come in and be changed. And I want to see people uh, where we don't have to come in and just, so to speak, catch up. I want to see people leave and stay constant in that. Even in here in Sundays, we talk about that all the time where we don't just come in Sunday to catch back up. Where we come in Sunday already charged up. Where we come in and minister to what's going on. And I know we all need ministering to at times. Yes. But to point to where we're already so built up in the spirit that we deliver something in here. Yes. 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 That we all together uh, uh, create just a, just a force of spirit. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Because thank God for the body because I, I know we still need it. As I said, we're going through dealings and trials and there's times where, where we get down and depressed or, or, or maybe if it's not you know, full depression, just little things you know, trip us up, but, but there's coming a time where all that's going away. Where a people's binding together and they're staying in the spirit with all these things. That's the difference. And, I, and there's still going to be empathy. There's still going to be concern. There's still going to be compassion. That doesn't go away. Uh, it says Jesus wept. The compassion's still there. But the fear goes away. Because we're still going to hold with people. We're not just going to say, well, the Lord's going to take care of it, you know, and send them on their way. Because there's going to be a compassionate people, but that live out of love and not fear. Because yes. there's tears of joy also. There's not just tears of pain. Yes. There's rejoicing. Yes. And so as we're in this time and in this hour, I believe we, begin, gonna, we have to begin to ask the Lord to tune our ears. And to, and to clear our eyes and to, to, to begin to see things as they are. Because the Lord has something right in front of us in this very hour that's life-changing. Yes. That's, that's something that's, uh, um, I mean, I guess the best way to put it is He Himself in this realm uh, to take communion with Him, to be changed by Him, to partake of Him um, in a way that... that, that that's so much deeper than what we've known. That, that's a tabernacling with Him. That we're beginning to be changed and we're beginning to be uh, tabernacled with Him into something new. To something completely different. Because in His uh, substance, there's something different than what man has in His substance. And it's a big difference. It has life in it. So as it begins to bind and mold with this earthly vessel, it changes it. It was really funny. I saw this morning um, on Facebook. I don't know if anybody else saw this, but I don't even remember the pastor's name. Or I don't know if he's a pastor, but he was up ministering and preaching. And he had this uh, pizza box message. <laughs> he was talking about, uh, you know, a pizza box. He said a pizza box by itself is worthless. It's not about the box when you get the pizza. It's about what's in it. The pizza box is worth nothing by itself. It's what's in that. And he was relating to the vessel, and that's the reality. It's not that we're uh, uh, boasting up the flesh or the outside. It's what's inside is a glorious thing. It's a thing that supersedes all these things that we know. It's a life-changing spirit. It's a thing that without it, we're nothing. It's a thing that transforms us. And that's the spirit that's beginning to come up out of us. It says it begins to clothe it upon us. 
uh, in Corinthians, it talks about all the new creature stuff. It talks about all the changing. Uh, there's something within us that's always been. Before this vessel was in this earth realm, it's always been in God. Since the time He created us, it's been there. And it's known the plan of the ages. It's known the plan of God. I love whenever we talk about that, the, the remembering. Because it's not just something, that's why I say it's not something we're coming up with or creating or, or, or something new. It's something that's always been in God. All the stuff that we're walking into has always been something that God is. Because we're being restored unto what He is. Being restored unto what we came out of. We're going back into that from which we came, but, but, but we're going to be changed in the process. That's what the fire is for, is the change. The purpose. The, 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 the insuring, I guess is the best way. It's the tool that God chose to form and mold a people. Because... <laughs> it does work. I don't know too many people in the natural that would just go stand out in the middle of a fire. <laughs> That's what we're being asked to do spiritually. Yes. It's to go stand in the fire and be changed. Mm -hmm. But it's not going to be like in the natural. It's not going to smell like burnt flesh or, or, or any of that stuff. It's going to have a sweet odor to it. It's going to have a sweet aroma. There's going to be things coming up out of us while we're in the fire. It's going to be life-giving. It's going to be changing how we minister, how we think, how we teach, how we talk, how we love. All those things. Because, uh, uh, as I said in the beginning, all that hay, all that stubble, all that stuff that, that we still hold on to that really has no substance to it is going away. All the things we get enjoyment from. Um, I remember whenever I first uh, had my experience in the Lord, it was like, I didn't... I didn't even have that enjoyment of all the natural things. It was like I didn't get the same life I had from reading an, an article that, that, that Preston Eby or Bob or somebody had written as to going and watching TV. And I hate to say it, which I watch more TV now, but, <laughs> but there's coming a place where it's like a people of God's not going to get the same enjoyment out of the things everybody else is. Because it's not about, oh, TV's bad or what's going on's bad and all that. It's just going to not become part of who we are. Because we know that there's so much more out there than all that. Than the world events. Than the sports games. Than the, uh, than the movies. Than all that. And I'm not just, you know, that's just the things that are coming to mind. It's all these things that we get involved with. That serve no purpose in the spiritual realm. That aren't, that, that aren't life-giving. They, they please our psyche. They, 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 we get enjoyment out of them. We get, uh, uh, you know, pleasurable experience. They're a stress relief thing. They're all those things. But the reality is, is they have no life in themselves. The only way to get life is to enter into the Lord. That's the only true stress relief. That's the only true enjoyment. That's the only true way to gain happiness, to, 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 to have that excitement in life. And I love when the Lord just uh, fills me with that sometimes. I get that. You know, and it's not, sometimes it's in a down spot, but sometimes I'm already not in such a low place, but he just feels that hunger in there. Yes. Uh -huh. It's just, I mean, you could feel that fire sometimes. Mm -hmm. It's just like that fire is burning, there's no way to put it out. Mm -hmm. And it begins to grow bigger and bigger, and that's what I was talking about earlier, as we begin to bind together, that fire begins to get bigger mm -hmm. in the earthly realm. It begins to burn up all these things that we see out in creation. Not just in man, but everything. Because everything's going to have to be in harmony with God. Everything's going to have to uh, sing life. It's going to have to agree with life. And not everything works out of that right now. We see all the things in earthly realm. They die away. They pass away. You know, they're changed. Nothing's created or destroyed. But at the same time, it's not immortal yet. You know, it, it turns into, if it's wood, it turns into energy, into chemicals. And it comes back eventually in different ways. But the reality is, is none of that's uh, Im immortal. What we're talking about is, 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 is an immortality, a change of the substance of what we are, and it's something that never fades away. In a new experience. Because in a spirit, that, that, that's, that, that's where it's coming from. That's already within us. But it's going to change all of what we see, too. It's not just going to be our spirit's going to leave our body and go somewhere and live in all eternity. It's bringing all this with it. And the wonder of it, the glory of it. Uh, we don't understand it. Uh, uh, science, you know, all these things. Uh, they would tell us we're crazy. Because <laughs> they can't study that. It's something beyond what we can study. 
And we see little bits and pieces of it. And we see, uh, I believe so many things in the earthly realm are uh, types and shadows of what's going on in the spiritual realm and what the realities are. But there's no way to confine what's happening. There's no way to understand what's happening. We can know it, but we don't uh, understand it as the Lord understands it. He gives us uh, uh, bits and pieces. He gives us uh, our part in it. If, if we knew really what all fire we were going to have to walk through, we'd probably turn around right now. Because <laughs> there's going to be a lot called from a people that want these things they talk about. They want the rod of iron, that want all the whatever uh, you want to talk about, that want to be that people that delivers creation. There's going to be a demand. And it's, again, it's not a punishment thing. It's just the way it is because it's going to have to come from a people that are no longer what creation is. It, it's that new creation that Paul talks about so well. It, it's, a, it's that newness, that, that the thing that no longer identifies with the old covenant of death. That begins to live out of that covenant that's already in Jesus right now. That's why I say we have to get to where Jesus is. And that's not going anywhere. That's not getting in a spaceship and going to outer space somewhere. <laughs> As some people make it so external. And again, that's the natural man. Because that's all natural man knows is up, down, over, there. It, he doesn't understand uh, how spirit's right here entangled with what we're dealing with. It's not going up, down, or anywhere. It's just a different... Uh, I guess substance you're living out is the best way to put it. I don't even have the words for it. It's like something that's right here in the midst of us. That we're interacting with all the time. But we're not going anywhere to experience it. It's right here. But we're beginning to experience it more and more. We're beginning to see things happen in it. We're beginning to hear things. We're beginning to, um, to see the spiritual reality in other people. I think that's one of the biggest keys that that the Lord's doing is He's beginning to open up eyes to a people to begin to, whenever they come in contact with another person, begin to see the reality of this person. To see the pain, to see the hurt, and to look beyond that, beyond all these uh, uh, characteristics that our flesh says, I don't, you know, uh, maybe they're, uh, you know, maybe they're an angry person that's hard to be around. Maybe they're just a person that, that, that likes to talk about people. or Whatever it is that makes it hard to be around them, we're beginning to see past all that. We're beginning to see the inside, that pureness, that heart. That's what we're ministering to. It's a heart ministry we're dealing with. It's not a head ministry because people, Lord knows their heads are messed up. <laughs> There's a lot wrong with creation right now. But all that's being worked out through the heart, the heart's beginning to take over, beginning to minister, beginning to let that life flow out of it. Because it knows the plan of God. It says amen to the plan of God. It doesn't rebel. It doesn't resist. It doesn't do all those things that our natural man does. And so as the more and more that begins to take over our vessels, the more and more we begin to just experience things in a new way. It's like, it's like having a new knowledge that you didn't have about the world. You know, we experience the world a lot differently at uh, 18 than we did at 10. Because we know so much more. We, we, so, so it's a different experience. And that's what I think, or that's what I know the Lord's doing in this hour. He's giving us a new experience. Because we're gaining wisdom, we're gaining knowledge, we're gaining an understanding of who He is. And that begins to change the way we operate. Uh, all, all the ideas we have, all the thoughts, all the things. Whenever we begin to understand something besides what we know, it begins to change how we're ministering and all those things. And so I praise the Lord and, and just honor Him and thank Him and, and have joy in my heart um, as we come in week to week. And we always have uh, needs that need to be met. But that's what the Lord's doing in this hour is, is putting the people through the fire and at the same time having those same people deliver people out of the fire. So as we hear a need to begin to minister to it, to begin to seek the Lord about it, to begin to ask the Lord, Lord, what's your will in this situation? And if it's not to be delivered yet, to hold with them, to bind with them, to give them strength to go through it. Amen. Because we just can't try to pull people out of the fire all the time. Then the process isn't finished. It, they're not fully formed. And so to have the, uh, at the same time, uh, to not have the fear that we get scared and try to pull them out of the fire. To just stand firm in what the Lord has showed us. To, to have confidence, yes. to have trust, to have faith yeah, yeah. in the Lord. Yeah. That all the things we see, He has control of. That's right. mm -hmm. Because, again, we talk about it and we say it and we know it. 
but there's a difference of living out of it. Yeah. The difference of experiencing that. The difference of uh, um, whenever you hear those things, the internal emotion. Because that's where the, um, I think Micah talked about that, about the walking, the man that was walking, and he would walk past a cemetery at night or something, and whenever he'd change in the way he felt on the inside. And that's what we're doing is the Lord's changing the way we react to these things. That it's no longer a reaction of fear, but a reaction of love, a reaction of, uh, of, of compassion. That's why he talks about praying for your enemies. And I don't, you know, I don't think it stresses that just for no reason. I think that that's the place we're coming to is where it's not about who's hurt our feelings in a natural realm, where it's not about who's done what and who knows what and who's kin to who and all that. It's about what God's asking us to do in the earth realm to change it. So if he says to minister, to not, <laughs> to not ask any questions, to minister it. To minister it the way he asks us to. Whether we think it's the best thing or not, to whether, whether we say there's no way if I say to that person he's going to get what I'm saying. Because only the Lord knows. So I believe he's calling us into a place that, that's an, uh, um, it's a place where we haven't been individually, as a body, and all these things. And we begin to experience it bits and pieces, but I begin to we're, believe we're beginning to walk into the fullness of it. So I praise and honor the Lord and just thank Him and, and just ask for the strength in the body, because I know there's a lot of people in the body that need the strength. Because it's not just so easy to go through the fire and just have a smile on your face and a joy. Even though that spirit keeps raising up and giving that to you, there's times where they're down. And so, as I said, we still have to have compassion and we have to reach out and minister and we have to support people. But that's what I have on my heart this morning is all the people going through the fire. And I'm one of them. Y'all are one of them. Everybody has a little piece of fire somewhere in their life. Some are bigger than others. But at times, it, it changes. You know, just because um, maybe you're not going through it wholeheartedly right now, there's a time where you're going to be going through it. And so to support people while they're going through it. Yes. That's where we're coming to is an unselfish ministry. Yes. A ministry that's about Christ, not about self. Because yes. that's what has to die is our self. Yeah. Uh, and that's what, that's what it's all about is dying to ourselves, to be like Him. To have that Christ raise up in us. So I praise the Lord this morning and thank you all.